is a tool. But when that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. Maybe we're not so different. Who are you under there? I'm vengeance. What's going on everybody? The Great Town here and today we're going to talk about the Batman. Yes, it, the day has finally come. Actually folks, <laughs> it's 5 o'clock in the morning here as I'm recording this. I am super awake. The most awake I've ever been at this hour ever. Uh, I've been up almost for 24 hours straight. I saw a very late showing of the Batman. It's a three hour movie folks if you don't know this. And um... It doesn't feel like three hours because at the end of it, you're like, holy shit, that didn't feel like three hours. I need more. <laughs> As you can tell where this review is going to go. But anyway, before I get into it, um, thanks for stopping by. If you like the video, don't forget to like and hey, why not subscribe? So we're going to get into it. It's going to be a very, believe it or not, folks, this is going to be a very short, concise review. Shorter than my other Batman reviews because I don't have much to say about this movie. I really don't. All I got to say is, um, in a nutshell... <laughs> it's the greatest Batman movie of all time. It's the, one of the greatest films of all time. Um, go see this movie. I beg of you. I beg of you to see this movie. Greatest performances of any of these ca iconic characters, uh, in my opinion. My humble opinion. I'm trying to not be biased, but if there's something you got to know about me, folks, I put The Dark Knight, um, the 2008 movie The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger, Ledger's Joker as the pinnacle, the... Be all and all Batman movies. That is until I witnessed the Batman. I don't want to sound biased, folks, but uh, Matt Reeves, man. I keep saying this. I kept saying this all along. In Matt Reeves, we trust. The man made me tear up and cry over a fucking computer-generated ape. And he made me overwhelmingly uh, enamored with the Batman. And he just has such a way of directing his style. And he wrote... Not only did he direct this movie, folks, he co-wrote this movie and he produced this movie. Producer, writer, and director. Give this man a fucking Oscar, please. That's all I can say. Um, other than that, uh, the performances all around. I don't want to spoil anything in this movie because my dear friends out there in YouTube land, you need to go see this movie. It's beyond ways that I can humanly comprehend and describe to you what goes on in this movie i mean i could i could root it for you if you wanted me to but i'm not going to be that person i want the mystique and the mystery to be in place because i want everyone out there to experience what i just witnessed for three hours of just utmost just insane glory uh from the start to finish you will be invested you will be immersed and if you're not then I feel very sorry for you. I feel very sorry for you. I take great pity on you if you do not, um, if you do not feel like you're you're getting something out of this movie. If you walk out of that theater not feeling anything, then I take great pity on you and I pity the fool who does that because this movie, folks, it's like the best way I can explain this movie is if someone really took the best moments of the movie Seven with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. Put them together with the greatest LA, LA noir style, like fucking detective story, with the combat and the action sequences extracted directly from the Batman Arkham games. You mix, mishmash that together with some of the greatest acting performances of all time in Batman history. You got yourself a fucking contender for one of the greatest Batman movies of all time. Is it better than The Dark Knight? That is the question that you're probably asking next, and I'm going to probably do my best to answer that for you. The Dark Knight, after a lot of thinking about this on the drive home from the movies, because the drive home from the movie theater for me was about 40 minutes. On those 40 minutes, I was blasting my metal music, thinking about humming the theme to the, the, the theme song to this movie in my mind, which we'll get to that in a little bit. The, the score is just fucking on some John Williams level of amazing... But I was thinking, is The Dark Knight, like, better 
than the Batman as a whole. We're talking like definitively, like the definitive Batman experience. Overall, the complete package, folks, is the Dark Knight, the complete Batman package, in a nutshell, performances, storyline, story arc, everything. Is it is it the be all end or Batman? And I, I I started thinking, I'm going, you know something? It's not. It really isn't. And I'll tell you why. No, 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 don't, don't, don't go, don't go, don't go crucifying me just yet. You're probably saying, well, why? What, what are you talking about? You, 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 you were raving. You gave that movie a perfect ten. Yes, it's a perfect ten. And the reason it's a perfect ten, still in my heart, is because of one reason, one pillar that holds that whole movie together, that ties the whole room together. That is the late great Heath Ledger as the Joker. If it wasn't for him, tying that whole movie together. Take the extract the Joker out of the Dark Knight. You have a, uh, you have a just a good Batman movie. Yeah, you have a solid Batman flick. It's like a seven. You take out the Joker, it, it shaves off three points for me immediately. Um, because if, without the Joker, you just have just a like a story that kind of like you know it's just a a cat and mouse type of game. Yeah, you get Christian Bale as Batman, and, and he, honestly, folks, when you really look back at Christian Bale compared to, like, Robert Pattinson now, it's night and day, folks. Literally, no no pun intended, it's night and day, because Christian Bale was trying a little too hard, in my opinion, to be Batman with the, with the voice. Like, he tried to, like, really sell it, and he didn't have to. Robert Pattinson comes on screen, it's like he was born to be Batman. I, I, and it, it, in a way, it kind of... I feel like a hypocrite almost because I always judge this dude from the fucking Twilight movies. I always judge this man because he, I always looked at him as a fucking sparkling vampire like sissy boy. He comes on screen and he, I'm sure he still has the pretty face, but when he's in the he dons the cowl and he's in that fucking suit and the, the, the car and the bike, he's fucking Batman. He is fucking Batman. He sounds like Batman. His voice isn't raspy where you have to fucking go, huh? What are you saying? What, what do you mean? You don't have to fucking second guess what he's talking about. He's he has that he has a he deepens his voice a little bit, but he does it in a monotone way where it's like I'm vengeance. Like he's like low, but it's like it's fucking cool. It's very fucking smooth, fucking smooth, fucking very very smooth. I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved his performance. I love fucking um, Paul Dano as the Riddler was on some like fucking Heath Ledger Joker level on the opposite side of the spectrum because. He wasn't like, like just chaotic. Like the Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker. Like he wanted you to know he was an agent of chaos. He wanted to fucking rattle the cages. The Riddler was like fucking playing games, like constantly just playing games with the whole fucking city. Like Gotham PD, everything, the, the mayor's office, Batman, fucking everyone. He was just fucking with them, toying with them, pulling those strings, those puppeteers. He was like the puppeteer pulling strings. And it was great. It was fucking great. The entire, like, the Riddler, like, he is the definitive Riddler. He is. He's just the Riddler. Like, he's better than Jim Carrey. Sorry. He's fucking way better. Way better. Way more grounded. And that's what this whole, the acting in this movie, the foundation it sets, the story it tells, is the most grounded Batman story. It's not campy. It's not, it's not nonsense. It's uh, it's not comical. If anything, it's it takes itself yeah uh, very seriously because of the tone of the movie, the uh, story arc that it unfolds. It's a very serious dark tone. It deals with corruption. It deals with um, betrayal. It deals with loss. It and and it deals with just you know r choosing right from wrong. Like what is right, what is wrong, and it does that while delivering the most satisfying detective story I have witnessed in years if not decades um unfold on screen and to just have that have the world's greatest detective for once in a batman movie be the world's greatest detective in the dark knight trilogy you got a hint of his detectiveness this fucking movie was three hours of him just like fucking did solving shit like literally like fucking doing fucking csi shit as batman and it was fucking awesome it was amazing. It was so satisfying as a fucking nerd to see that come to fruition on life on the real screen, uh, on the fucking, uh, on the silver screen to just see that. And it's just, it makes me fucking emotional. It really does. Um, uh, let's talk about briefly um, uh, Zoe, um, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, the definitive cat. She's now my definitive Catwoman. Sorry, Michelle Pfeiffer. Sorry, not sorry. Zoe fucking Kravitz, 
nailed it to the fucking cross. She, everything from her sexiness to her prowess to the way demeanor, the way she talked, the chemistry with her and Batman on screen together was just magical to watch. Just magical. It felt like I was watching a comic book just play out on screen. It was just beautiful. The imagery, the art, artwork, the art design, the cinematography, everything, the writing, just fucking excellent. Excellent. Um, I'm not a Colin Farrell fan. I don't like him, his acting, but he fucking, he, he fucking crushed it as Penguin. He, he fit the role and I love seeing him get the shit beat out of him as Penguin because I, I'm imagining Colin Farrell getting the shit beat out of him and it's just great. In the suit, you would never tell it's him. He sounds like a fucking wise guy, like fucking mafioso type of guy. He's like, hey, call me Oz. Like, he's like, yeah, you know, it's fucking, it's so good. Um, also, uh, Alfred, played by Andy Serkis, did a great job too. Uh, he wasn't in the movie. I expected him to be in the movie longer, but nah, he wasn't in there for too long. But he served a great purpose. Um, I also want to briefly mention, uh, I didn't realize John Turturro was in this movie as, um as uh, uh, Carmine Falcone, and I thought that he did a great job too. He was very fucking, like, kind of, his presence was very, um, very, very, like, um, uh, pro profound. Like, you could tell, like, he was that, that head guy. Like, he fucking ran shit. Um, and also, I just want to say, if you're, if you guys think that you're going to see Batman out of the bat suit more than in the bat suit, you are gravely mistaken. This movie's three hours long on the money, you see Batman in this bat, bat suit for at least two and a half, two, maybe two and a half hours. He's, he's in that bat suit. He's always in the bat suit with the exception of a few scenes where he's Bruce Wayne. Nine, like literally like 75 to 80% of the time he's in the bat suit. And I think that is a tremendous because we're not used to getting that. Like we're not used to getting that in any Batman movie at all. Like we're used to just him seeing fucking the actors portray their fucking smug faces on screen. But no, it. You're getting Batman, folks. You're in this for the Batman. You're going to get the Batman as much as you can fucking take it. And I got to say this. I know this review is going on a little longer than I wanted, but I got a lot to say now. I'm just wired. Um, the Batmobile is fucking probably the best Batmobile since um, since Michael Keaton Batmobile in like the 1980s and early 90s. It is fucking awesome. It kicks ass. It's a 19, like 69 Charger. It, it has a fucking blue flame in the back. He's chasing down shit. And he gets a bat cycle in the end of the movie. That shit is fucking glorious. Um, action. Up the ass. Like I said, some of the shit he does, he's like disarming enemies with fucking the grappling gun. Fucking grappling gun comes out of his hand like a fucking hook shot. He's like, it's like a fucking, uh, he comes out of his hand like he's summoning a fucking, like, a lightsaber. It comes out. It's fucking great. He's taking enemies down with that fucking... Uh, beating the shit out it's just it's fantastic to watch unfold um the riddler's plot to it's just it's, it's a slow burn but when you get there you're like oh my god like wow like you're like holy shit this all is, is leading up to something a lot bigger uh and, and it takes a toll on bruce's past and like his family history and like not everything is as it seems and i don't want to say more without ruining it but Please just go see this movie. Everything. And last but not least, the score. Michael G Giacchino. God bless you. You are the modern day John Williams. And I'm going to leave you with this, folks. And I'm going to wrap it up and just drop my score and leave. The, the, the theme song, why I love it so much, is because it has hymns that remind me of Darth Vader's theme from The Empire Strikes Back. Now, I'm just going to do a little bit. It's going to be bad. I'm sorry. But now it goes like this. The Batman theme. The Batman theme goes... Dun 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 dun. Now add this at the end of that. Dun 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 dun. Do you see why it's so good? Do you see why it's so fucking good, folks? It's modeled after the goddamn Dark Lord of the Sith. Hello. All right, <laughs> let's wrap this shit up. Okay, so if I had to score the Batman on a scale of 1 to 10, I want to give it an 11, but I'm not going to be too facetious. But I'm going to give it a 10. It's a perfect movie. Not just a perfect Batman movie, but a perfect, like, fucking film noir, noir movie. Like, it's just that good. Um, there's an Easter egg at the end of the movie that kind of segues, will segue into the sequel, which is, you know, is going to be a sequel. Movie well, we already made almost $300 million, folks. You know it's going to be a sequel. And the way they drop the hints on who's going to be the co-villain in the next movie. It's, it's, 
it's amazing. It, it, it's you're in Arkham Asylum at the end of the movie, and when that character just shows up, you're like, no fucking way. But way, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Let me just end this now before I say too much. Anyway, that's my review of the Batman. Please, please, my dear friends, go see this movie, and even more so, if you like this video, like and subscribe. That being said, that's my review. Thanks as always for stopping by, and I will catch everybody next time.